this is Kelter's process modeler. It's a 100% web-based feature-rich interface uh, with the look and feel of a Visio. You have a whole bunch of activities on the left-hand side uh, and every activity has its own set, set of activity properties on the right. And if you look at the menu items, there are options to save the entire workflow as an EMF image, as a PNG image. If you have a big diagram that you want to clear, you can click clear diagram. There's options to edit, redo, undo, uh, full screen options. And then uh, once you design the process, you have the option to validate the definition and uh, publish it. Uh, there are a whole bunch of options around the import, export uh, on, on the workflow. So once you design the workflow, if you want to export the workflow, you'll be able to do that. If you want to import it, you'll be able to do that too. And uh, apart from that, if you have des designed your workflow in uh, Visio, you'll be able to import into the Skeltas process modeler. Again, uh, like I said, it's a 100% web-based uh, uh, interface, does not require any external IDs, plugins, ActiveX downloads. Um, so, uh, so there are a bunch of other options like work item fields, alternate actors, BAM configuration, where you can configure the reports for uh, the process designer. So y you also have uh, for uh, business users, you have the ability to give wizards through which they can design uh, the workflows. So all the different activities are categorized into uh, the ones that you see here, human activities, integration activities, engine activities, all catering to uh, system to human, human to system, human to human uh, uh, kind of coordinations. Let's take, for example, if you want to design a simple expense process, all that you need to do is go to one of these uh, categories where, let's say, uh, if the expense is more than $5,000, it has to go to one person. Uh, if it is less than $5,000, it has to go to another person. So I'll be able to do all that without any uh, issues. It's as uh, simple as drag and drop that you see here. And uh, once you drag and drop, uh, you'll be able to set the properties. For example, if you want to uh, create a decision, what you can do is uh, you'll be able to put a condition. Um, for example, I can take uh, the variables or XML variables that is going to bring in data into the workflow. Let's say expense amount is greater than, uh, let's say, $5,000. You can also use and or parenthesis logic uh, in order to uh, do the complete uh, expression. I'm just going to leave it here. So the expense amount is greater than 5000 If it is true, go down one path. If it is false, go down another path. So um, it's a whole bunch of uh, uh, activities that you have here. Let's go ahead and uh, go with the human activities. Uh, let's say I want uh, the approver to approve uh, the expense. So if it is greater than 5000 if it is true, I want it to go to uh, the CFO. So I can just say designation is equal to CFO. I can also make it really dynamic by using the variables. Um, and again, the end or parenthesis logic, I can just add it, update it. Um, and and uh, once I'm done with that, uh, if I want to do it on a false uh, output, for example, if it is less than $5,000, uh, what I can do is I can assign an approval to another user where I'll uh, take uh, the designation here to be manager. So automatically, uh, here it goes to the ma manager, here it goes to the CFO. In order to identify that, you can also name and give a description here, like CFO approval and then uh, you can do a manager approval so every activity has its uh, own set of properties so if you look at the manager approval not only uh, you can assign an activity to uh, a, a particular manager but you can also assign it to a queue which may contain uh, multiple managers. And apart from that, uh, in case if it is assigned to five or six managers, if you want to make sure that at least 50% uh, of them or 60% of them act upon the task, 
uh, you can handle all that uh, you can allow uh, the person to forward it if he or she does not want to act upon it and a whole bunch of options you can send out reminders uh, from from the workflow you can send out escalations if uh, if somebody is not working on this particular task so all of those different options are configured here in the activity properties and uh, just to have a look at uh, some of the other activities so before before I do that uh, so when you right click this you have the option to set it to false so it's pretty easy you can uh, change the colors you can change the look and feel um, and and uh, you also don't see a refresh rate uh, basically that's because it's completely built using Ajax and JavaScript uh, not only on the uh, IE browser we also have the ability to load it on uh, uh, Firefox as as well as Safari so there's a whole bunch of human activities using which you can coordinate uh, the human uh, stuff for example let's say if it is approved I want to um, send the approval information to the submitter so I can just do this approved goes to the submitter so I can just say dynamically whoever submitted the expense it has to go to him or her so it would be something like ID is equal to the ID of the person who submitted the expense once I do this similarly I can uh, also have another activity that will go to the submitter ID is equal to variable dot submitted by ID and this time when it is rejected so similarly I can uh, I can do this to the manager approval as well so I have the option to move things like this just to increase the readability of the entire workflow so I have this one and then in case of manager approval again I can have a set of information that is being sent uh, when it is approved or rejected or I can also directly uh, connect it with the information activity so pretty easy to use an intuitive interface and for every activity uh, right down at the bottom you have uh, uh, the help option where when you click uh, it gives you the different uh, 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 scenarios using which you can um, update a particular property so all the different optional fields the mandatory fields how to set those properties so all of it is given in complete detail in case if you want to refer when you are designing a process so set of human activities we have a set of integration activities where you can call a com object uh, you can create an office uh, document uh, or you can generate uh, using a template and store it in FTP or HTTP in case if you want to invoke a web service you'll be able to do that and uh, if you want to write scripts in C sharp or VB.net you'll be able to do that too. file operations where let's say if you want to move the file uh, from HTTP to FTP you'll be able to do that you just need to give the source and destination details um, so all all the uh, properties are easy to use and there are a set of uh, uh, SOA execute uh, activities but let's say uh, if you when I say SOA over here it means Skelter object access you have the capability to register existing .NET assemblies that may already have business rules uh, so you can register in the Skelta Enterprise Console and uh, you have access to the entire set of methods that the .NET DLLs may contain and uh, updating a database, waiting for an event uh, to fire before moving ahead with a workflow you have the ability to do all that engine activities where it's more of a system level act activity uh, where you can loop through a particular branch uh, you have uh, the ability to set up rules if there are multiple branches you can make use of the synchronized action which will make sure that all the activities and all the branches gets completed before going down a single path if you want to trigger off a workflow within a workflow you can use uh, the workflow activity and, uh, and and a whole bunch of other stuff 
uh, there's uh, this decision activity so instead of rule if you have if you want to have multiple outputs you could also use the decision activity and uh, what you could do is when you're right when when you're creating a decision we give uh, uh, an expression builder using which you'll be able to do that for example you can use this build expression option and uh, if you have connected to a set of dotnet assemblies you can use those methods or you could just uh, use uh, some of these options that we give right here um, so for example you can just take this and uh, you can use some of these uh, operators that we've given here and um, you can do like a scripting and then you can save uh, the entire expression uh, and that will get executed as a business rule and apart from that uh, if you want to set up something like let's say uh, if the workflow uh, the workflow instance variable uh, you have a whole bunch of variables that is bringing in the values from the workflow so let me just uh, um, see some of the options expense type let's say if it is uh, hotel expense or, or stay expense then it has to go to a different person um, so you can say hotel and then uh, you can add as many rules as you want here and you could also delete them um, and uh, I can also say others so when you try to do this and when you try to connect this activity with one of the activities uh, so you'll get all the different outputs here like hotel and others and, and if you had multiple outputs you'll be able to see that too and uh, deleting an activity from uh, uh, from the UI is as simple as just right clicking and deleting so you have so many other options when you right click you can change the background color gradient fill and all that stuff change the text uh, size font and all that so, so it's pretty simple and easy to use and uh, after engine activities there's a bunch of scheduler activities where let's say if you want to trigger off a particular activity on a given time on a given date on a given day and it has to be recurring you can control all of that using scheduler activities communication activities where you can send out emails if you want to receive emails you can use the wait for email activity if the email comes with an attachment uh, you can take that attachment and save it into an FTP or a SharePoint site or onto a physical folder so you have the option to do all of that too and say sending out text messages instant messengers uh, all possible through these set of communication activities that the process modeler has and uh, we also have uh, the option to execute business rules in uh, uh, BizTalk. So, for example, if you have an orchestration designed in BizTalk, and if you want to send message to BizTalk from Skelta process, you'll be able to do that. And uh, we also have an adapter for BizTalk called Skelta Talk, which, when installed on the BizTalk side, has the ability to uh, send and receive data through the send and receive port that the adapter gives you. And then BPMN elements, uh, we are compliant with the BPMN standards. Uh, so you have uh, the options of uh, pool, placeholders, lanes, using which you can uh, you can design and uh, better the readability of a particular process. List activities, so if you want to navigate through uh, a, a form data or a list data, you'll be able to do that using the list activities. And apart from that, security, uh, some of the security options that you can set dynamically through the execution of the workflow uh, SharePoint activities so if you are running uh, the process modeler in a SharePoint environment uh, creating a list creating a site creating a view all gets automated uh, using the Skelter process modeler again if you drag and drop a create site you'll see all the different uh, properties like site title site description uh, template name which when you give uh, it has the ability to generate and create a site in a SharePoint environment so all this you'll be doing manually in SharePoint but we automate through the workflow engine here and uh, there are wizard based uh, workflow uh, creations where you can uh, create workflows for SharePoint uh, create uh, approvals create uh, options to move or copy a document in a SharePoint environment so you have uh, different options for, uh, for for simple workflows to be created 
without writing any code. You just need to answer a few set of questions and it's automatically going to generate um, the workflow in the palette. And apart from that, we also have a SAP adapter. So in case if you want to communicate to the SAP table through the workflow and get data and set data into the SAP environment, you'll be able to do all of that automatically. And apart from that, if you want to create your own activity where uh, it does some proprietary uh, and, uh, requirement on the end user side, let's take for example if you want to connect to Great Plains, if you want to connect to any other legacy systems, mainframes, AS400, uh, you can build your own custom action that will help you to communicate to all these different applications. So it's a it's a clean uh, uh, environment. No uh, uh, no external IDs, plugins. Like I said, uh, no footprint that it leaves on the client side, and a whole bunch of options right uh, at your fingertip that you can use in order to model business processes with ease. Thank you.